it's Shari here today and I'm going to be making this fun space card with this mound of stars at the bottom. So I'm using the How You Bean star add-on set and this is meant to be used with the jar from the How You Bean set but we're going to be using it a little bit different today. I've got a piece of Watercolor Wishes Lucky Penny paper. This is cut from a 12 by 12 sheet because this was a scrap I happen to have. You could also use the yellow paper from the Watercolor Wishes Petite Paper Pack. Either one would work. I've cut it to be four and a quarter wide so it'll go all the way across a top folding portrait oriented card. And then I've cut it a little higher than I need because I'm going to be trimming off the top. I'm going to be white embossing this group of stars. So I have stamped it in the Versamark clear sticky ink that's good for embossing. And I'm going to be using Lawn Fawn white embossing powder, which I have in this little container here. And I'm using a little spoon to apply it. This first image that I stamped here, I made sure it was in the center and it was kind of up high. This is the center and the top of my mound of stars that will be on the bottom. So once I've got that powder on there, I can just take my heat tool and melt that powder to create that nice bright white image. You are going to want to melt the embossing powder between each stamping because we're going to be masking. You can see those masks that I have in the top right corner. Those are cut from post-it notes that are sticky on the entire back. I just stamp those and cut those out ahead of time. But we're going to be masking it off, so you want to make sure that you melt that embossing powder every time so that the mask doesn't grab hold of your powder and take it away. All right, now that that mask is in place, I can continue to stamp. So I'm going to continue on the right side here, and I'm actually going to move the stars down a little bit because I want the top line of these stars to look sort of curved. I didn't want a straight line. I want it to look sort of like all the stars are on a planet. If you've seen the Pixar short La Luna, you may know what I'm talking about. I really like that little short, but the the little boy in that story goes and sweeps up the stars off the moon with his father and his grandfather. So this card sort of reminds me of that. If you had if you were on the surface of the moon and it was covered in stars, that's sort of what this is going to look like. So I'm continuing the same process. I'm stamping in the Versamark ink, adding the white embossing powder, and heat setting that, melting it. Then I'll go add the mask and stamp again. So it took six times of stamping and embossing to create the whole bottom that I wanted here. I did have to cut a third mask for this part in the middle because I realized once I had those two masks on that it was going to overlap those stars on the left a little bit. So I just cut a third one. And I also turned the stamp slightly at the bottom just so it didn't look quite so repetitive to the eye. Now that all those stars are stamped and embossed, I can go in with my scissors and I'm just going to carefully fussy cut off around that top edge. Um, I'm making sure that I stay outside with the white embossing. I'm actually holding off my scissors from the embossing line just slightly so that I don't cut into that embossing at all and sort of mess up that perfectly widthed line that you get when you stamp. I want it to look like we even cut this out with a die. So you can see I've got that pile of stars at the bottom there. And I'm actually going to trim some of that off because it was a little too tall. Now I'm going to work on my background here. I've just got a piece of watercolor paper cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. I've taken some of my distress inks in Blueprint Sketch, which is this blue, uh, Wilted Violet, which is this purple, and then the teal is Peacock Feathers. And I'm just taking some with a smaller brush and some water and just dabbing it in little areas on this wet background. 
I am not a watercolor expert, so I'm just kind of playing around, see what happens. I'm also going in with a baby wipe and dabbing away some of that's pooling up on the side because I don't want it to get muddy and dark. So I'm taking my heat tool and I'm going to go ahead and dry this. And this is sort of the first layer. Um, you can see it's sort of lighter. It's blended pretty well. But what I wanted was a little more texture, a little more depth. So I'm going to go in with the same colors and sort of stay in the same areas where I put the color before. And this color is going to be a little darker. It's going to have a little more of a defined edge, look a little more blobs, a little more texture going on. You can see I'm picking up some of those droplets, which I'm actually going to do a little bit more here in a minute. And this whole process, I know I'm speeding it up so our video is not so long, but it probably took about 10 minutes. Um, just playing with the watercolor and that's also with um, drying it with my heat tool in between instead of letting it dry naturally so I dried it and then I'm going to go in and pick up those droplets which you can't really get this look if it's still soaking wet so do this when it's dry <laughs> Now that I've got it sort of how I want it to look, you can see there's a lot more texture to it now, picking up those drops and everything. I'm just going to define the edges of it a little more, make it look a little darker, a little more like we're out in the galaxy. And I'm using some chip sapphire and a blending tool to just pull some of that darker ink around the edges and the top. It really makes those stars pop now that it's so dark and textured up there. But I'm going to do the same thing with the stars, with the or with the wild honey distressing. Excuse me. I'm going to add some to the bottom and the edges, just to define that edge a little more. So I wanted to add some stars to my galaxy here. So I've got some starry watercolors, and I'm using that yellow gold. And I'm just going to add a whole bunch of water to it, get it nice and wet, and almost like soup up here. Um, just going to add a whole bunch of water. You can see I'm just adding drops of water there from the water cup that's off screen. And I'm just going to load up this paintbrush with a whole bunch of that wet paint. And I'm just going to tap it with my finger and let those drips just sprinkle all over the place. So this first round, they were kind of small. Get a little bit more paint on your paintbrush, a little more water, and you'll get some bigger drops. But I really like when you get a whole bunch of different sizes. Just keep going till you've got enough and you get the look that you want. There's really no right or wrong. And I'm going to go ahead and dry that just because I'm impatient. And I decided I wanted to add some of those flecks to the stars too, just for a little bit of consistency between the two. I feel like they need some shimmer and shine as well. Now to work on my sentiment, I've got a piece of black cardstock and I'm going to white emboss the sentiment as well. I'm going to sort of make the look of some little, um, like if you made these with a label maker, I guess, some little squares, three separate ones, instead of putting them all together. So the first one I've stamped here says, May All Your. The next one will say wishes come true and I'm stamping those far enough apart to I can cut them with my trimmer and have a little bit of wiggle room in between to trim off I don't have to have them perfectly spaced and then the last one I just wanted the part that says birthday so I'm only going to ink up the side that says birthday I'll go ahead and add that white embossing and you can see that it's only going to stick where that ink is because I brushed that piece of black cardstock with my anti-static tool before I stamped and then I'll just melt that make those nice bright white sentiments on that black cardstock I'll just use my paper trimmer to cut these into strips and you can see there I'm just going to cut off the excess between the strips and I'm just using my words sort of as my guide I'm using my wire in my paper trimmer to see how wide to cut these strips. And then I'll trim off the extra with my scissors.
And I already trimmed some of the bottom of these stars off. Um, so I'm just checking my spacing here and make sure I've kind of got it where I want it to be. So I feel okay about this spacing. I feel like I don't need to trim any more off. So I'm going to start adhering these pieces together and assembling my card. And I am using Tombow Extreme Adhesive. This one's super sticky. And part of the reason I'm using this adhesive runner is because this piece of watercolor paper has seen a lot of water and a lot of heat, so it's not really flat anymore. It got very warped. And this is the adhesive I like to use when I have a piece of paper like this that's been loved a whole lot. Um, it will hold it down really well. So I make sure I do all four sides and a whole bunch through the middle. So now I'm going to add these little sentiment strips I created using some foam adhesive. And these happen to be black, so they're kind of going to disappear behind these black strips. And I am starting with the one on the bottom so that my spacing is correct. I want to make sure I have enough space between the stars and that bottom strip for the little astronaut I wanted to add. So I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up so that I'm sure that I have that spacing correct. So now I'm going to color my little astronaut here, and I'm keeping this pretty simple. I'm just going to use some cool grays. I'm not doing any shading at all. I'm just going to use a light gray for his suit, a little bit darker for some of these little accents here. And then I'll go in with my darkest one and do his boots at the bottom and his gloves. I don't want him to be too colorful because my background is very colorful. Um, he's going to stand out anyways because I'm going to pop him up from the card base. But I feel like he needs to be more neutral because the background and the stars are so colorful. So I used some very pale browns for his face, and I'm going to use yellows for his hair. Um, I felt like that tied in with the stars very well. And of course some rosy cheeks. And then I picked out just a couple colors to kind of pull in the blues and the purples in the background for the parts, the buttons, and the lights on the front of his suit. I'm going to use that coordinating die to cut him out, and I'm just going to hold that in place with a little bit of washi tape. And now I'm going to add sort of my tether from wherever his ship is off this card. So this is a metallic opaque pin, and the key to these pins is shake it up really well. There's a ball inside that you'll hear move around. So you want to make sure you shake it up really well because when it sits on your desk the pigment will settle. And the other thing is to get it started before you bring it to your project so you don't do what I just did there which is your ink sort of dried up because it wasn't really ready for me to start writing a whole bunch. So you can see I'm getting it started again over there on my scratch piece of paper and then I'm just going to go back and draw in where it stopped. Um, I will trace it again just to thicken it up a little bit. But this pen is a nice opaque metallic so it's going to go right over all this background and stand out nice and bright. And it comes in lots of colors. This one just happens to be silver. And then I'm going to pop him up on the same foam adhesive like I did the little sentiment strips there. And I'm going to make sure I place him to where it looks like that tether that I drew comes right into his the back of his helmet. So he's sort of floating above the stars. And I decided to add just a little more detail to him. Um, I used a white gel pen just to add some sort of shine lines to the round part of his helmet.
And then that is the finished card, which I think is a super fun way to use the stars that doesn't require the jar. And I just think that background with those stars, they really look like they're glowing. And here's a closer look. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank you.